have seen past the shroud. You are a watcher now, and the watcher you will stay. A watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. A dubious honor, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people. And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. The wheel has turned again, Watcher. Come. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved merry gourd, replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. The creases of the dwarf's face tighten into a smile as he gives you a courteous nod. Sit, please. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cad Nua. The Gaunt Woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Your brush with the Divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Does everything appear to be in order? Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bereth. One half, anyway. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. The gods offered you boons in exchange for resolving the Hollowborn crisis. You did not accept any of their offers. What did you do with the souls? Tell me, do you remember when we last met? You came to that tower seeking our aid. You prayed for help in reaching Theos, 
beyond the court of penitence, but would not pledge yourself to me. And yet, when it was time to make your choice, you returned those lost souls to the wheel. It seems you knew what was right in the end after all. She delicately places a card on the table, a bell in a tower. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Though Aeothus stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Atra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced Watcher to find him. Taking a physical form in Aora is fraught with peril. Most mortal minds and bodies are incapable of containing divine power. It can lead to... problems, as Aethys learned not long ago. Her armored hand gingerly places a card sideways on the table. It features a man with a burst of light instead of a head. I know. It is my business to know. 322 in Cadnua and your surrounding lands. Their souls remain in Aethys still. You have the power to save them. Serve me and I will return you to your body. Or don't, and return to the wheel. Good. Before you return to Aora as my herald, you must remember who you were. The last whisper of life in death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals.
After him. Yeah. Ah! Charge. Kill them all. Show them how it's done. Take them down. Death to our enemies. Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you, to open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small lump of darkness roiling within you. The darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span of a few seconds. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. Her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf, hovering nearby. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door.